Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be telling you about measuring waves. And again, this is a topic on waves, but more towards the A-level rather than the GCSE. However, because you need to know the basics, I do have a video here uh, of the GCSE, which corresponds to what is most important in this lesson or the video that explains the most of the important things of this lesson uh, here. So click on the video, which I'll put on the description. And basically in this lesson, you need to know two main things. So for example, you need to know how to describe a wave, stuff like amplitude, wavelength, peak, draw, all of that stuff. And you need to know some keywords as well. So you need to know how to describe it in terms of looking at a wave, but also what the keywords mean or the definitions. And you also need to know this formula, which says that wave speed in meters per second equals to the frequency in hertz times the wavelength in meters, okay? So again, go on this video because there are going to th be things that I don't talk about today or here in this video because it's on this one, all right? So how does the stuff that you know from GCSE compare to the ones that you need to know in A-level? So I put here with the arrow the new ones for you, okay? So <coughs> apologies. So displacement of a particle, any particle that is vibrating in a wave is the distance and the direction from the equilibrium position. Remember, displacement is a vector. So it's not just the distance that you are from the equilibrium or the normal. It will be as well the direction if you're up or down from that equilibrium position. Amplitude of a wave is the maximum displacement of a vibrating particle. So particles can go further away from equilibrium and closer by. When you are at a point that you're further away, either up or down, that's going to be the amplitude, okay? So it's the maximum displacement of a vibrating particle for a transverse wave is going to be the height of the wave, the crest or the depth of the wave draw from the equilibrium position. Amplitude comes in meters. Wavelength, that also comes in meters, is the least difference between two adjacent vibrating particles in the same displacement and velocity at the same time. So, for example, a distance in between two peaks or crests or troughs or middles going from a certain direction, okay? Now, stuff that is new, one complete cycle of a wave uh, is from maximum displacement to the next maximum displacement. So from one wave peak to the next. So one comp complete cycle is you completing a full wavelength. It's actually the same thing, okay? So a full cycle is a full wavelength. The period of a wave is the time for one complete wave to pass through a fixed point. And the frequency of a wave is the number of cycles of vibration of a particle per second or the number of complete waves passing a point per second or the number of waves produced by a source per second and the unit for frequency is hertz which is the same as one over second now if you think about it if the frequency is the number of waves passing every second and the period of the wave is a time for one complete wave to pass through so for any waves of a certain frequency the period of the wave which period is um, represented as a, uh, a capital T is going to be one over F, one over the frequency in Hertz, okay? Now, wave speed. Now, we know that the speed of wave is the wavelength times the frequency, but where does this come from? This actually comes from the basic speed formula that says that speed equals the distance traveled over time. Now, in terms of waves, the distance traveled is going to be the distance that I travel in one cycle, and the time will be the time for a cycle. So if you think about it, and if you think about the definitions I just gave you, then the speed is going to be a full wavelength over T, the time period, okay? So if speed is a full wavelength over T, the time period, and I know that T is 1 over frequency, speed will be equal to a wavelength divided by 1 over frequency. But this is the same as saying that the speed of a wave, which comes a C, that's the symbol that it represents, equals the wavelength times the frequency. So you just demonstrated the formula that speed of a wave is a wavelength times its frequency just by picking from the basic uh, speed formula, okay? Now, if the wave remains with the same speed, for example, an electromagnetic wave, changing the wavelength changes the frequency. If you have a higher frequency, then the wave has a higher energy and a shorter wavelength. If you have a lower frequency, 
then the wave will have a lower energy and a longer wavelength. And this part of the energy comes from a formula that you know from particle physics that says that energy equals Planck's constant times the frequency. So if I increase the frequency, I increase the energy as well. In terms of electromagnetic waves, uh, then the waves with a longer wavelength are the ones with the lower frequency and therefore the waves with a higher frequency are, have the shorter wavelength. So that's why gamma rays, for example, have such a short wavelength. They are the most energetic ones. And then it goes X-rays, ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, microwaves and radio waves. And the radio waves are this part here with a lower frequency, lower energy and longer wavelengths. Okay? All right, now, something that is completely new for you. So even if you know everything about the GCSC basics of the waves, this is new for you, phase difference. Phase difference, by definition, is a fraction of a cycle between two vibrating particles. So the phase difference can be measured in degrees or in radians. Now, how do you make the conversion? Well, one cycle is a full wavelength, right? So that's going to be 360 degrees, and that's going to be equal, in terms of radians, to 2 pi, okay? So if I want to know the phase difference at for any point, any vibration particle, so for example, that's one vibrating particle here in the blue wave, one vibrating particle here in the red wave, how do I measure it? Well, the phase difference in radians is 2 pi times d the distance in between the two vibrating particles over the wavelength. So I would do 2 pi times this distance over the wavelength of the waves, okay? And as you can see, the phase difference, the formula, is actually a representation of the definition. is the fraction of a cycle between two vibrating particles. I want to know which distance in radians, in 2 pi, that they moved in a full cycle, which is the wavelength, okay, the lambda symbol. If I want to know in degrees, I can just do the conversion knowing that 2 pi radians is 360 degrees, okay? So, let's see this animation here that I got from the internet, so I didn't do it. So, uh, here the guy is changing the amplitude, which changes the height of the wave and the energy of the wave. Then the wavelength makes that the frequency increases, um, so the waves get closer together. And then look at the phase difference. Zero now increases up to 360 and is going to decrease again and as you can see the guy is playing around the guy or the girl they are playing around showing the phase difference and as as if you want to pause the video at any point to see a particular phase difference you will be able to okay so repeating this animation again wavelength is the height of the wave okay so the distance between the maximum displacement and the equilibrium position if I change the amplitude, oh, I said wavelength. If I change the amplitude, I change this, this part. So I wanted to say amplitude just now, okay? Wavelength is the distance that it takes for a full cycle. And here we go again, the phase difference. And as you can see, it's hard for you without pausing the video. So I have a table for you in a second, okay? So there you can see the phase difference changing and how it changes in degrees, okay? So, as I told you, this is quite difficult to figure out just by looking at the animation, right? So I have here this picture that I took from the AQA, and then this cycle that I did it myself to show some of the phase difference. And I have here the point O. And then I have three other points, four other points, P, Q, R, and S. So, what is the distance from these points from O, okay, in terms of wavelengths? So P... This is a full wavelength, this is half of a wavelength, so this is a quarter of a wavelength. So P is one quarter of the wavelength away from O. Q is half of a wavelength away. R is three times one quarter of the wavelength, one, two, three. So it's three over four of wavelength. And S is a full wavelength. All right, so if you know how to figure out what is the distance in terms of wavelength, you will know how to figure out the phase difference even if you don't, are not given the distance in a, in a question, okay? So the step is, look at the difference in terms of wavelengths and then let's make it into radians. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this into the D distance of this formula. So let me go there again. 
So what I'm going to do in the rest of the table now is substituting D into whatever I had there as the distance, okay? So one quarter of pi times, uh, one quarter of lambda times two pi over lambda, the lambda's uh, cut at the one quarter makes that the two disappears and then I have a two on the bottom, so one half of um, pi. Next one, so I do two pi times one half of wavelength over the wavelength. So again, wavelengths cancel out, one over two times two cancel out, so I just get pi. Next one, three-fourths of a wavelength. Again, the wavelengths cancel out. I get three times, and then the four makes that the two disappears and becomes a two, so it's three over two times pi. And then if I have a full wavelength, that's going to be a two pi difference, okay? Two pi because that's the difference of 360 degree, uh, degrees or 200, uh, two pi radians. Or again, if you want, you just do 2 pi times the wavelength over the wavelength, the wavelengths cancel out, so you get 2 pi. I also added for you the phase difference in uh, degrees. So pi over 2 is 90 degrees, pi is 180 degrees, 3 over 2 pi is 270 degrees, so I'm going 90 degrees up every time, okay? And then 2 pi is 360 degrees. So there you go, and I think that's all. Yeah, it is. So there you go. That's all you need to know about the measuring properties of waves and keyword searches, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and all that you need to know about phase difference. Up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye!